there are people who say that the eyes are the window to the soul. Well, I'm going to show you that the eyes are really the window to a person's internal experience. Um, so I'm going, to show, I'm going to tell you about a bunch of things that you could find elsewhere. And then I'm going to tell you some things that you're only going to find here. So first of all, the direction that the eyes are looking tells you what's going on in someone's mind. When people look up, then that's visual. When people look to the sides, that's, that's auditory. And when people look down, then we're dealing with the feeling of the body. So this is right out of NLP, Neuro Linguistic Programming. Um, when, when I, and then when we have, when I look to your right, which is my left, so if you see someone looking to the right, in any direction there, that's remembering. They're remembering. When people look to the left, or to what is, well, to, to your left, uh, when you're looking at them, which is my right, then that would be constructing. Okay, so another way to think about this, um, which I present in my book, is we have recreating and creating. And that fits into an overall paradigm. There's a reason that I that I talk about it like that. But anyway, so let's go through each each of these each of these directions. So if I, if you ask me, like, what did uh, the dog that you saw yesterday look like, or what did your what did your shoes the shoes that you wore yesterday look like, then then you might look like that. You might go look that direction. So you're looking up to the left. And again, you're looking at me. I'm looking up to my left, which is your right. So you remember, you're looking at a person right remembering or recreating. So, so that now I'm, I'm visually recalling what it looked like, whatever it is that you told me to imagine or that I'm just imagining. Then, if I wanted to, if I, if you asked me, what is your lunch going to look like tomorrow? What elaborate meal are you coming up with? Uh, then I might go like that. So now I'm uh, constructing visually. Now, then there's there's auditorily remembering, auditorily constructing. So if I remember what someone said to me the other day, I might go like that. I look to what is your right to the side, directly to the side. Then if I look that way, that might be trying to figure out what I'm going to say next. Um, auditorily constructing. So coming up with something new that could be said or whatever. Then if I look down to my left, which is your right again, I'm looking down, that is recreating the feeling of the body. So I'm sort of, I'm remembering the way something felt. Usually people look that way if they're thinking. Uh, in NLP they talk about that as being um, audio digital. So it's like the rhythm of the words, the way the words feel, the way it sound feels. But ultimately it's going to be, and I talk about this in my book, that it's, it's remembering the way something feels for the body or remembering the way it feels internally. And then if we then if we look down the other direction, that is what NLP refers to as kinesthetic. And what I would refer to as creating a feeling of the body. So checking the way something feels. If you see someone look down like that, they're checking the way they feel in response maybe to something you're saying or something that just happened. How do I feel about that? And how does my how does it feel? How does my body feel about that? So then I look down, I'm looking down to my right. So, so remember, I look that way, visually remembering. That way, visually constructing. Auditorily remembering. Auditorily constructing. Checking to see, remembering the way something felt internally. Checking to see how something feels internally, constructing an internal feeling. 
Okay, so now you have that's that's just that's just a few things. Uh, so that's right out of NLP. Now, if we want to look at more things that the eyes tell you, we can see something entirely new, something that I present in my books, but you won't find anywhere else, at least not yet. So, if someone has, and this I'm not going to be able to just create it for you right now, but if someone has a gaze that is penetrating, okay, they're looking right into you, and you can see this in a photo of someone, you could see this in person, their gaze is penetrating, then you know a lot of things about a person. And I'm gonna just, I'll go through the other, the other directions of the eyes and I'll, tell you what, and I'll tell you what you know. If you see someone who's looking directly at you, it looks like they're looking at you, their eyes are sort of, they're not going in, but they're going sort of out at you, that's like the social gaze, okay? So their, their attention is not just focused on you, it's sort of focused on you and another person, and I'll tell you more about that in a second. And then the third kind of gaze would be a sort of glazed over look, like if someone's overtired, um, or if they, you know if they need to get work done, and their attention isn't really on you, it's on the things they need to get done. All right, so now I'm gonna go into detail about each of those gazes. So, penetrating gaze. If someone's looking into you, and it's like like fixating you right there, You're, they're looking into your soul, that is telling you that that person likes a long, intense conversation, or at least at that moment, that person likes a long, intense conversation. That person feels like they're looking for their other half in the world, the person who's gonna complete them, because basically what it's telling you is their attention is completely on you, and they're very good at, and, and people who have that gaze more often feel like they're looking for their other half in the world because they're looking for another person that they're gonna get energy from. Their attention is on you because that's where they're looking for the energy of, of ultimately of self-aware existence I talk about in my books, but they're looking for energy from you. They're looking for intensity from you. And ultimately, if, if you are talking about something that they enjoy talking about, then they could go on for hours because they're gonna, they're gonna be intensely there, completely there in the conversation and wanting more. And so, they, so you know their attention is very much on you if they have a penetrating gaze. If they have a social gaze, again, not looking into you the way that the penetrating gaze does, but looking at you, now that is going to tell you that this person wants to be around a bunch of people. And they want to make sure they say hi to everyone. So if you're at a party and someone looks like that, you might be able to talk to them for a little while, but if you talk, if you're talking too long with them, then they're, that's that's going to be stressful for them because they really want to say hi, how are you, how are you doing, have a short, very short interaction with you, and then they want to go and say hi to someone else and say hi, how are you, because because that's they're looking for their energy from the group. They're not looking for their energy from just you. And when they're looking at you like that, it's sort of like they're paying attention to you, but they're also paying attention to whether there's someone else they need to say hi to. And so again, they're looking for their energy from the group and not just from one person. Um, so, so again, if they have a gaze like that, a social gaze looking at you, then they don't want to have a long, intense interaction with you. They, wanna, they, they might still be really good friends, but, that, it, but they're not looking for a long conversation. Then there's the self-preservation kind of glazed over look I say self-preservation because people who have that as their gaze, they, their attention is on the things that they need to get done. Their work, the, uh, the atmosphere of the room, uh, they're focusing on self-preservation needs. So they're paying attention to, their, to like cleanliness and, um, and getting work done and getting sleep and, and you know, being clean, having their surroundings clean, having the right lighting, the right atmosphere, the right temperature. They want their concern with food and and money. If you know, if the person is particularly focused on money, but ultimately it's resources. They want to have enough resources to meet their needs. And if they're looking at you like that with that glazed over look, they don't want to be in a long conversation because what they really want is to make sure that they get work done or that they they're going to need to get sleep. That's the person who's going to break off the interaction at some point 
no matter how good it is, because it's time to go to bed. <laughs> or I really need to get work done. 